Welcome to the Molecular Genetics Notes video. For those of you that are not familiar with learning by listening to your teacher on a computer, I can tell you that it is definitely weird for me sitting in my living room late at night talking to my computer, so I guess my advice is deal with it. Sorry if that sounds harsh. For those of you that are used to listening to me teach you by computer, you're going to notice some differences. Uh, I'm not going to go through a PowerPoint this time around. We're going to be learning about biological processes, which are pretty tough to learn by a static PowerPoint, even though I could probably jazz it up with some animations. Someone's already done this online, so no point for me wasting my time. And so we're going to go through things a little bit differently, but I think you will appreciate it once we're done to see uh, the difference, uh, why we're doing it this way. I want to start this unit by showing you a few websites. This is just the NCBI web website, which is the National Center for Biotechnology Biotech Information. You can just Google this, NCBI. Or uh, actually, the part of this website I want to show you, I'm just going to fast forward to by clicking my back button. Here's the whole website typed out if you're interested. But the reason I'm taking you here because in 2001, uh, the whole entire human genome was published online, which means anyone could go online and find uh, any out of all out of all of our chromosomes where genes were located, uh, get an idea of how big they are, and actually a lot more information, but a lot of stuff we're not going to get into. So here you can see on the left side here is just uh, all the chromosomes, one through twenty, well basically one through twenty three, twenty three pairs except for they've separated out X and Y. Uh, so you can just click on any one of these. For instance, number three, I have genes selected. So I'm just going to see the genes that are located on chromosome number three to a uh, nerdy science teacher. I think this is fascinating. I think some of you guys will also think it's at least interesting. So here's chromosome number three. Here are all the uh, sections of chromosome number three that contain uh, information. Some are actually uh, contain just kind of chunks of DNA that are actually not coding for proteins, stuff we're not really going to get into the details of which. All of these are hyperlinks and way too much information than you need. But here's the interesting part, is, or the main guts of this, is just the description. It kind of tells you what this thing is or what this thing does. If you copy and paste this into Google, Wikipedia sometimes works too. You'll probably get a really good idea of what uh, this gene is actually doing for your body. So I just wanted to show you that because uh, the actually the reason for showing you this is because um, it's kind of give you an idea of what this uh, first kind of assignment is for this unit, and it's actually not due until the next unit. I'm giving you guys about a month to work on this, so no excuses that turn it in late and get zero points. Um, and that comes from this kind of this next website here. It's just genome.gov. <coughs> And what you'll see on this, there's their home page. A lot of this will probably change by the time you look at it. But you can see these tabs across the top. I want you to go to the Issues and Genetics tab and kind of get an idea of what this uh, kind of shows you just from here, but you'll have to do some research on your own. Uh, the reason I want you to do this first assignment, or really the first assignment we're going to talk about, not do until the next unit, but I want you guys to write a paper telling me about some things uh, related to issues in genetics, just like it says here. Let me give you an example. Uh, right now, or traditionally, uh, when you're born, you're given a birth certificate that has your name on it, uh, maybe a social security number, uh, and uh, height, weight, or length and weight, actually, you're measured your length because you're laying down. Um, and then that's it. But uh, where we're going, uh, possibly, in the future, very near future, hopefully, or possibly, I guess I should say, is that uh, you'll also be born uh, or given your genetic information. In other words, you know, they'll give you something like this, uh, maybe a website you can go to, or maybe, uh, you know, maybe something that you would uh, have uh, paper copies of. Although paper will not exist, probably in uh, maybe the recent future. Um, that. Maybe information that you have to disclose to, for example, an insurance company um, that is, you know, giving you health insurance or giving you life insurance. Um, the problem being for a person that is, uh, say, predisposed to uh, some issues like heart disease or uh, certain types of cancers, where they uh, technically a, an insurance company could um, increase your rate that you are paying more because you have a, a higher risk, you're a high risk uh, patient or high risk client. 
Uh, so I just kind of want to get your guys' feelings about that. And there's a bunch of things you'll see in here that uh, you can kind of go through and uh, look, up, look up some stuff and do some research. And not just this website, but any website. So that just gives you a basis for your assignment. Uh, what I do want to do is start going over uh, kind of the basics for this unit. Uh, we're going to do some quick review uh, about the DNA structure, the DNA molecule that you've hopefully already learned about in last semester. Uh, but the three primary focuses of this unit are going to be transcription, translation, and mutation. You can see those here in this bottom box here on the page. And so uh, let's just quickly go back through the structure of the DNA molecule. Remember the DNA molecule is made of repeating units called nucleotides that are made up of a phosphate group, a sugar, called deoxyribose, why the DNA is called DNA, here's the D in DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and a nitrogenous base, and the reason they're called nitrogenous bases is because they contain nitrogens, although you don't see any N's here, these are just the names of the bases, adenine and thymine, here you can see and yellow and green, these are always going to pair up together, or at least should be pairing up together when there are no problems or issues, and then again down here, cytosine and guanine, uh, two more nitrogenous bases that should pair up together according to the uh, rules of the DNA molecule. Now the difference between DNA and RNA that we'll get into, the DNA molecule is double-stranded, has these four bases, A, T, G, and C, and has the sugar deoxyribose. RNA has a different sugar, and that is it's a ribose, which is, as you can see, almost the exact same sugar. The only difference here is that there's an oxygen connected here to the second carbon, carbon number two. There is no oxygen connected to carbon number two over here. That's pretty much it for the deoxyribose ribose difference. Uh, also you'll see, uh, when we talk about RNA, you'll see how there's uh, no T in RNA, and instead in RNA there is a U. So all the uh, same other bases, A, C, and G, only for RNA it's A, U, C, G, DNA it's A, T, G, C. But all the same rules apply as far as base pairing goes. So let's get into the first uh, kind of focus of this unit and then just transcription. And literally transcription is uh, by definition just taking the DNA code and copying it onto a piece of RNA, creating a piece of RNA from the DNA code. The reason that this is done is because DNA is a very important molecule. If the DNA were to get out of the nucleus, and maybe get destroyed or get messed up or some of these bases getting replaced or missing. Uh, some things can really be quite, here we're going to talk about mutations, uh, be quite a big deal because you know your DNA gets messed up and that cell could lose function, could die. And if you talk about a bunch of cells losing function in an important organ like a heart or a brain, then you're talking about pretty severe problems. So the DNA molecule stays in the nucleus and doesn't leave, but there has to be some way to get that code out to the cytoplasm where the ribosomes are, where the actual proteins are getting made. So the first thing we'll talk about is transcription, and this is how the DNA molecule basically gets copied onto a piece or into a piece of RNA. We're going to talk about an enzyme, similar to uh, in replication we talked about RNA polymerase, although not in much detail. But what RNA polymerase does is just add RNA nucleotides to a piece of DNA. However, it's a little more complicated than that, and you'll see this in this process, but that's kind of the basis. So RNA polymerase, again, ACE enzyme, it's going to recognize this certain sequence on the DNA called the promoter region. It's going to open up the DNA, and then it's going to start bringing in nucleotides, RNA nucleotides, A, U, G, and C, to match up with the bases nitrogenous bases on the DNA molecule. So then again, these guys, these RNA molecules are just kind of floating out here in space. They look like they're appearing out of nowhere here, but to pull them in would, I guess, make this a little more complicated. So these RNA nucleotides are being pulled in from the uh, just kind of the surrounding space by RNA polymerase. They're being added on to the DNA molecule, but then you'll notice that they kind of get removed and then the DNA molecule gets zipped back up and that's kind of an important part of this. Again, the DNA molecule is not getting changed, altered in any way. Again, DNA is the instructions. These, these are the, this is the genetic code for this organism to be what it's supposed to be and partially do what it's supposed to do. And then you can see it gets to the end. Here's called the terminator sequence. 
And what happens is that it just zips the rest of the DNA up and then spits out this piece of RNA. Okay, one more time. RNA polymerase, I'm going to add some new vocab. RNA polymerase recognizes the promoter sequence. This is called initiation right here, where it opens up the piece of DNA and begins to add RNA nucleotides. Again, you can see it's a different color, a red uh, phosphate sugar backbone, similar to this picture here. But this is a picture of DNA. So here you can see it brings in RNA nucleotides. This part is called elongation. The reason it's called that, pretty simple. It's making this piece of RNA longer by again bringing in nucleotides to match up with this DNA, spitting them out, and then zipping the DNA back up. It gets to the terminator sequence, stops adding nucleotides. So this is called the termination of the process. Zips it up, spits out the piece of RNA, and RNA polymerase says, I'll be back. That was a joke. So, transcription literally is copying the DNA code onto a piece of RNA. Again, DNA code is like the instructions, the blueprint for, say, making a house. Okay? If the instructions for that house are in any way messed up and there are no copies made, well, you've just lost all information on how to make, make that house correctly. The copies are the RNA. The copies are actually what gets sent to the job site so that the job can be done correctly. Uh, some ar scientists will argue that the proteins are as important as the DNA molecule or perhaps more important because they're the ones that are actually doing the jobs. In other words, the uh, DNA code would be the blueprints for making the house. The people that are actually building the house would be the proteins. So you can see functionally how they're a little bit more important because they're actually going into doing the process of making proteins. And that's called translation, which we'll see in the next video.